All right, and we're back. Uh, we're going to Scott Inland Yard to talk to Inspector Jep about the Bexhill on the Sea uh, murder letter that we got. Um, here's hoping it's not too bad. Uh, trying to see if there's anything we're doing around here. Uh, that's the taxi. We don't need to go anywhere. I think we're going in. So, here we go. Um, by the way, this is the Agatha Christie ABC murders, which I've been doing on Meandering for a while. And I'm Juliana. And this is really funny because I talked about making the start more uniform and I lied. I lied very badly. Anyway, uh, we're here. Um, this is Hercule Poirot. I've gone on about how... I've gone on about it a lot. I'll quit. I'll quit. Um... But... Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Chap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. I think it's a cute little game. Really, I do. Um, it's not the most interactive or anything, but it's a good little point and shoot. London. I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Alice Asher was murdered in Endover, the ABC killer's first murder. Alright. Let's go back around this way. Um... Like all hunters, Hastings has always been fascinated by weapons. Like whole ant. Okay. That's not helpful. Jap appears to be snowed under. Telephone is off the hook. Cup of tea is cold. And a Chap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilon Sea. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so. Good God, Poro. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. Based on what we know, this is the correct answer. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asher clearly written of the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received the letter mentioning Bexhill, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Bien. We should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. All right, so now it's just telling Jap. Well, uh, Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. Mm. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. 
Poirot. Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jack waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. How to insult your friends and call them old after they have said the same about you. Uh, -dum -dum. All right, what do we got? Um... Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Seashore, seafront, uh, modern bungalows, and... Bexhill is a pretty buildings. little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. Yes. Of the 1920s. Woo. Anyway. Um... Since we've got to talk with Jap, let's make this walk a little faster. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For women, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I will I haven't say, yet um... informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported Pearl a young woman is missing. slightly sexist, but it was the Not 1920s. The it's, just, it's from a woman's no perspective. No witnesses, I imagine. So... Indeed. Or... We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. So what I was trying to say is, Agatha Christie wrote these. She was, in fact, a woman, um, although her main character in this is not, and he is slightly sexist, so were the times. So, uh, if you're gonna get into it on Perot being sexist, please just kind of take it with a historical lens. Yes, he is, but at the same time, he is, he is someone who believes that anyone is capable of murder, so I kind of let it slide, and usually his comments about women doing things are more to uh, state societal standards rather than his own personal opinions. Because um, he's found quite a few female murderers. Um, which is kind of interesting. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder. But a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. His marks have been left by a row of poor breaded cloth. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. A braided seat belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath.
She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Woo! Close. I was the victim killed. She did not struggle. There was a braided silk belt. The victim was pretty. The victim has marks on her neck. The victim was strangled with surprise or by surprise by her own belt. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. All right, what? There we go. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, the killer. Nope. All right. Uh, are the crimes in Andover and Beck still the work of the same murderer? The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. There is no doubt about it. Bexhill has one of the most beautiful beaches in the area. Okay, so it looks like we're looking for number six based on the little line. So, okay. I want to make sure it wasn't number nine. Um. The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. That looks like a seven one five. Uh, okay. Really? There we go. Sorry, I forget how far in we have to be. So seven one five, I think, was the number. <sighs> a dual locking padlock. Seven one eight. Five. Okay. Whew. All right. So we lift up. We push over. And we're in. Mostly. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. Yeah. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called? Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat to the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have a address? 
<laughs> yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impressionist things. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. All right, so I'm going to call this good here. Um, so we found out Betty, um, Elizabeth Barnard, uh, is now dead. We've investigated her body. We're going to go to her place of establishment, or her work establishment next, and uh, see what that gets us. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Subscribe if you still like us. Um, this has been another meandering episode. I know I don't talk a lot during this one other than to try and defend Perot. Uh, especially during the time it was written. Sorry. I'll try not to. Anyway. Um. Thumbs up. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Uh. If you like something, let us know. If you don't like something, please also let us know. Um. Anyway. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.